guys welcome back to the channel hope you're having a wonderful weekend hope you're not scared like mcdonald's is they're scared and they're feeling threatened we're going to talk about all of this today in our shake shack bull case video this is another company similar to the elf beauty to the honest company it's not always a technology stock that is growing like a market leader like a technology stock right it can be other industries and we've seen that all the time and i believe shake shack is undervalued and they're growing like crazy and they present an really cool investing opportunity for the short term but also for the long term for the 10-year um, plan right i listened to the earnings report we're going to go through that i'm going to give you my notes we're going to compare it to some of its peers and we're going to see what price shake shack could get to um in the next five to ten years here right so real quick on this we've seen a lot of news from mcdonald's lately they're overhauling their burgers right no more dry burgers their shitty little fake burger that's overpriced um you know they've had enough with dry patties and squishy buns and so they're on a quest to kind of copy the five guys shake shack i think they're called smash burgers right these burgers with the big melted cheese and there's real meat that's made you know on the patty fresh and they're revamping towards that style because they can't compete anymore. They can't grow. If you look at the annual growth rate of McDonald's, it's slowed down to the near single digits. And these other companies are growing like crazy, right? They're doubling every few years. And so it's kind of what the consumer the consumer has voted. They vote with their money. They vote with their, their attendance. And, and that's all. McDonald's has actually also introduced a Starbucks competitor. Uh, um, this is not a video about McDonald's, but this is an interesting thing to share um it's called mcdo what is it called mcdonald's let's do this mcdonald's new coffee chain okay they're not showing it this is funny there it is cos cosmics cos mcs right and it's like this ugly ass branding right this blue and yellow thing anyway they're going to compete with starbucks they're going to compete with dunkin donuts and so it's, mcdonald's trying to do some interesting things here their whole menu is breakfast all day at cosmix and their whole menu is kind of breakfast items and a lot of drinks focus on all these teas all these coffees all these shakes so they have a conference this week we'll see if any news um, interesting news comes out of mcdonald's but that's a dinosaur um and warren Buff buffett owns most of it anyways we'll get to the ta at the end of this video um for shake shack which is a pretty recent ipo here well it's eight years ago right and it's still trading sideways near its ipo price right it, it hasn't much really gone anywhere i want you to notice all these green earnings so this is a management team that consistently um beats the earnings expectations and kind of meets those expectations and and, and delivers right and you see some pretty big numbers in terms of earnings beats every single quarter what's happening here though is shake shack is becoming profitable at this point in time they have an earnings per share now that means they have a bottom line right shake shack rating upgrade as profitability shows great improvement if we click on earnings you always want to see this right a company that has 18 up revisions and zero down revisions it means analysts who follow the company they're you know they're, they're getting new information they're, they're running new financial models they're listening to the earnings calls and they're reassessing the revision upwards for the company they're they're kind of um they're 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 you know and, and they're doing that over and over 18 of those right they're upping their projections for the company i should say okay let's start with i mean if you guys have been to shake shack what is shake shack basically we have a little summary right over here on this research report from stock rover a roadside burger stand it is serving classic american menu of premium burgers hot dogs crispy chicken frozen custard kinko cut fries shakes beer and wine and more the company's burgers are made with a whole muscle blend of all natural hormone and antibiotic free angus beef ground fresh daily cooked to order and serve on a non-genetically non-gmo potato bun um, they focus on food and beverages um, the company serves draft root beer, seasonally freshly squeezed lemonade, organic fresh brewed iced tea, cold brew coffee, organic apple juice, and bottled water. So a couple of interesting things here. The burgers are fantastic, by the way. For me, they're they're the best. They're 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 unbeatable, better than five guys, right? Let me know in the comments down below what's your favorite burger, right? So Shake Shack, Five Guys, McDonald's, kill Mary Fuck, right? Let me know in the comment down below. I'm marrying Shake Shack. And I'm fucking Shake Shack. 
<laughs> All right, so it's kind of it's a more gourmet premium experience, obviously, than McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's. Those are fast food. Um, this is more, even more gourmet than, and more. It's a nicer quality place than Five Guys, and you, and you can see their offerings as well with the beer and wine. You have alcohol there, so that that goes to show they're a bit more gourmet. The restaurants are nicer. Um, in terms of design, decorations, and all of that. And then they also focus on drinks, right? Not just the alcohol, but it's called Shake Shack because they have a whole menu of milkshakes, and the milkshakes are fantastic as well. And, of course, all these, you know, you can get a cold brew coffee there. So it, a lot of cool drinks, but also the best burgers. Um, they're comparing Shake Shack here to all these companies. They're not the ones I used. We'll talk about my comparison at the end. These are other small chains, right? You got Cheesecake Factory. Compared to these, Shake Shack's the biggest. We're at a $2.6 billion market cap. So there is room to grow. We're the biggest compared to these, but we're the smallest compared to what I think we should actually be comparing ourselves to, which is McDonald's, uh, Wendy's Burger King, Chipotle, Five Guys, and you know we'll talk about Starbucks in a little. But these are fine. I mean, let's go through some of these comparisons as well. Analyst rating is a buy here, consensus. We see uh, sales growth, five-year average, 20%, three-year average, 26%. So that's increasing, right? And it's obviously much higher than S&P and then the restaurant industry. So this is a 20% grower per annum compound annual growth rate. And that is fantastic growth. You always want to see double-digit growth in a stock you're interested in trading or investing in, especially for the long term. And higher double-digit above 20% is even more. That's excellent that's like a bunch of high growing tech stocks. We're trading at 2.5 price sales. Keep that number in mind. It's about there, same as the S&P, same as the industry. So it's not super undervalued, right? It's not like we're trading at a 1 PS. We've talked about the Honest Company and some of these other companies that I expect to be long-term investments. And they're very clearly undervalued. Even something like Disney, I think is undervalued. This is right on par with the market, right? And, and we're going to use price sales because we're just getting in, we're just becoming profitable. We don't care about earnings right now. A company like this, you just want to see growth, right? It's a growth stock. Use all the money, reinvest in this company to grow more. We don't care about earnings that can come later. Keep up this 20% Kager compound annual growth rate and expand and um, continue to increase your market share and your dominance. Earnings can come later and we can return value to the shareholders later. So what we're interested in is sales and price to sales when you're talking about growth stocks. And so we're not necessarily super cheap, but we're not expensive either. We're right there with the market. We're interested in what price we're willing to pay for this growth. Okay. Let's continue down here. We have 43%, 44% gross margins, which again, compared to the restaurant industry is higher than, than usual, right? We need to get our operations under control. Um, but of course, with the pandemic, with the high interest rate environment, this number is taking a hit. And with the with the expansion, right? There, there's a ton of CapEx as they're expanding to new locations. And so right now the operating margins, you know, it's still operating profitably, which is good. That's good. You, you, you see, we're even... You know we're operating profitably and we're bottom line profitable we have a positive return on assets equity and return on invested capital so you know it's not one of these kind of trying to catch a falling knife unprofitable business they're profitable they're, they're getting there uh, we just need to start to raise these numbers but our gross margins are much higher than the industry right gross margins the most important one you want to pay attention to right that's your revenue minus your cost or your cost of cogs cost of revenue cost of goods sold. And so that's the, the kind of margin or profit that can spill over into this bottom line profitability later. Um, but for now, we have that room to expand. Okay. Um, we talked about earning surprises. And so positive quarters, 12, 100% positive quarters in the past three years there. And that's, that's fantastic, right? You can see the surprise beats huge numbers on the beats. So not only are we having um, positive quarters every single quarter beating earnings, but the analyst revisions are all up revisions. So it's a well-run company. Um, you know, they're, they're managed very well. We don't care about returns right now. We're interested in, in where can this thing go in the next five to 10 years? No dividend yet. Of course, we don't want to see a dividend. We want to invest into growth. Okay, their current ratio and quick ratio is great too. You want to see that number over one always. That means um, they're not in danger of going bankrupt or anything like that. They're, they don't have too much debt. They have enough equity, assets, and capital to pay off their short and long term debt. Okay, again, we don't care about performance. We talked about analyst revisions. 
So growth versus peers. Shake Shack sales, we talked about the sales, 21% quarter over quarter change. We are, you know, n these guys aren't really growing. But again, I, I don't think we should compare it to like a pizza delivery and things like that. But we have, you know, we have the highest score here for growth. And we talked about our three-year um, compound annual growth rate increasing from the five-year. And so that's good to see, um, right? Because coming out of COVID, you want to see that increasing. Valuation versus peers. Um, Shake Shack over here. We don't care about this because this is based on price earnings and we're not interested in earnings right now. Efficiency versus peers. You can see our gross margins much higher than our peers. That's what we're interested in, right? Gross margins at this point in time. Financial strength versus peers. We have a 99 rating. Again, um, we don't need to worry about debt or anything like that. Very solvent. We don't care about momentum because that's price. Okay, so this 18 percent number keep in mind for some models we're going to use here and you can see those revenues um, from 2018 until today consistently growing we just passed the 1 billion dollar mark in 2023 so over 1 billion in annualized sales right ttm is trailing 12 months so the last 12 months and so this is every year we've passed 1 billion and that's exciting right it's becoming a larger company um and again you know negative 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 we're also net income we're also profitable now right two million dollars profitable but that's okay for now so we don't care about pe because obviously you know earnings are so small at this point the pe is high and you're going to pay a high pe for a high growth stock you look at mcdonald's in the 70s and 80s it was over 100 all these fast growing chains right Cash, we have we talked about cash, current assets, and, and net debt, and all that. That's all healthy. You want to see op operating cash flow increasing into the triple digits. That's good in terms of its operations, right? Cash from operating activities, hundred million um, here in the trading twelve months, over hundred million, and that's increasing. You want to see that increasing? That's perfect. We're not too interested in cash from financing activities. Um, we're interested in cash from operating activities because this is uh, shows you how the business um, as it operates can increase its cash flow. So that means um, that's that return on invested capital number. That means it can continue to fund its own growth, right? It's not going to depend on raising capital later, either by issuing more equity or by uh, raising debt and, and, and kind of diluting people or shareholders. Okay. Profitability. Okay. There's the trade in 12 months. Um, all these metrics going positive, no dividend. All right, so let's continue on here. A couple of warnings for this stock. Um, high short percentage, about 10% of the float. Um, not too worried about that. Share dilution, 33%. So if this continues, you got to keep that in mind. Um, you don't want to see them issuing some more stock-based comp and diluting their investors. They actually mentioned that on an earnings report. Guys, give me five seconds here. My phone is ringing for the apartment. Okay, let's continue on here. Let's go through some of um, this third quarter quarter shareholder letter. Total revenue grew 21% year over year. So that's that growth rate we like, 276 million. And of course, if you annualize this, that's over that 1 billion in a trading 12 months. Shack sales grew 20%. Licensing revenue grew 35%. So that's growing even faster year over year. This is an interesting concept. If you look at a place like Chipotle, they actually own and operate all their own locations so they don't do the franchising licensing thing i like this um, business model because they have their own which they have higher margins for but it's extra income where they have low cost for the licensing revenue it's basically free money you can apply to open your own shake shack and they're going to take a commission or a cut of all the profits they're going to set you up and, and and that's like you know you're establishing all these income producing assets over time it's going to both help you expand and help add to your top and bottom lines System-wide sales, 25%. Average weekly sales up. Same shock sales, 2.3% year over year. This was interesting because they actually said their foot traffic was slightly down, that the sales per shock were up. So they expect that number to increase even more as foot traffic um, gets back to normal levels. Operating income, positive versus a loss last year. Um, that's that operating profit margin, year over year improvement. Net income versus a loss last year. Very good. Open 10 new domestic shocks. So in the US, they opened 10 new ones operated by themselves. 
for drive throughs They talked about this drive through model, which is very efficient for them. I need to open the door to my house now for this mailman. Another 10 seconds. I'll be right back. Okay, they opened four new drive throughs It's an interesting thing. They find their profit margins and their business model for the drive throughs to be their, their kind of best money-making thing, right? So the drive through is very profitable. It works very well. They're going to open a lot more of those. Of course, most of it is electronic. You only need one employee, if anything, or, or a couple of employees there, and your CapEx or startup cost to open a drive through is going to be much lower, and it's going to convert much more revenue. Open 15 new licensed shocks, including locations in the Bahamas and China. Whew. Sorry, guys. I ran. Okay, so 15 new license shocks, and this, this is the number that's growing at that 30 plus percent year over year. And they are in Asia, they are in the Bahamas, and in different locations. That Bahamas is in the Atlantis Resort with a full service bar. Okay, some numbers. Total revenue up into the right. All these numbers up into the right. Average weekly sales. Kind of sideways throughout 2023. Shock level, operating profit up and to the right. Shock count growing. This thing's growing 23% year over year. They're, they're trying to keep this number around 20% and continue expanding worldwide year over year. That's pretty, it's nothing crazy. It's, you know, they're not trying to grow 100%. So slow and steady. And again, every new shock that opens is just, uh, it's just adding to the top and bottom lines, right? It's like another asset that you own. It's, it's going to be bringing more and more yearly revenue for this company. I mean, the restaurant business, if it's executed efficiently, is, is really a beautiful business because it's such a, especially when you're so small, we're going to talk about their locations versus their competitors. And they have so much more room to grow. And just, you know, they're going to, over the next 10, 20 years, plant another few thousand of these income generating shacks. Okay, you guys can read that. I want to skip down here. Um, these are some focuses on their guest experience and their, you know, their team and employment methods. A balanced portfolio, drive-throughs. Okay, they talked a lot about the kiosks. The kiosks um, are really profitable. It's the most profitable kind of point of sale mechanism, um, and they really revamped that entire system, and it's it's really helping to drive profitability as well. Guided 4Q, they guided for 4Q to outperform historical seasonality despite ongoing inflationary pressures. Um, it's going to be kind of their 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 best 4Q ever. <clears throat> Licensed business growth, you see it right there. 30% versus last year. They're in China, 24%. Okay. Let's move on here. These are some more locations. I want to talk about they're doing some things with movies as well, promoting that Trolls movie, different milkshakes, and having things for the kids uh, inside of each. Uh, these are some inflationary pressures they talked about in terms of paper food uh, and packaging and things of that nature, and especially the beef. And, you know, that's going to normalize as inflation comes down, which is going to help their operating expenses as well. Okay, let's let's move on to this analysis I have over here. Some more earnings call notes where they have this new staffing model, which is really going to increase their efficiency and bottom line. They have 500 global shacks now, so we've crossed that number, but they're only in 33 states and 18 countries, right? They want to expand at that 20% number every year in terms of locations, but they still have 17 states to get to and a ton of countries, right? Stock-based compensation, they're forecasting that down, so they're re revising their guidance to the downside. That's very good. That's that dilution, that red flag we saw about dilution, right? Net build cost for 2024, they're expecting a 10% reduction in startup cost. So to build a new shack is going to cost 10% cheaper um, next year than it did this year. Again, inflation, interest rates, interest rates have stopped rising for now. They're expecting rate cuts next year, but even if they don't cut, they're stopped rising. And over time, over the next 10 years, as these rates go back down, um, that net build cost is going to reduce as well. Elevated CapEx the past couple of years because of the interest rate, because of the kiosk programs, and because of expansion, right? So we're trading at a PS or price sales ratio of two, 
we have one billion dollars in sales as you guys saw and we are at a 2.6 billion market cap so 2 2.6 right our market cap is 2.6 times our sales so shake shack has that 2.6 price to sales ratio 2.3 right and so where can we go from here well 500 locations what about our competition i mean mcdonald's has 40,000 locations now they've been going for 50 60 years Chipotle is, is, is newer, right? They've been going for maybe 20 years. They have 3,200 locations. Wendy's, 7,000. Burger King, 19,000 locations. Five Guys, which is newer, um, a bit a bit older, 1,700 plus 1,300 in development. That's 3K total. Starbucks has 36,000. They're another successful franchise that has expanded globally. So you can see, you know, maybe we won't get to 40K in our lifetimes, but we're, we're at least going to, 5x from here right we're gonna get to 2500 locations um, in the next 10 years um, something like that we're gonna grow and this is especially if you included the licensing locations as well 3k something like that we have a lot of room for expansion we got to enter more states enter more countries they're not in continental europe yet right they're in the uk they're not here in spain or in, in france or anything like that yet so a lot more room to grow there now, <clears throat> look at the market caps for these other companies, 207 billion, of course, 61 billion for Chipotle, 4 billion for Wendy's, but that's still double us. That's a 2x, 32 billion for BK. There's a caveat here because BK is not a public company. It's actually a company called, uh, what is it called? Um, Q, what is it called? Restaurant. QSR, Restaurant Brands International. So QSR owns Tim Hortons, Popeyes, Firehouse Subs, and Burger King. And so 32 billion, but let's assume Burger King's half of that, right? And so let's assume 16 billion of those sales are Burger King because it's bigger than these franchises. Okay, five guys. <clears throat> They're a private company, so we, we don't know. We, we can't see their financials, but they crossed 1 billion in revenue in 2014. So keep that in mind. We just crossed 1 billion in sales this year. Five guys did it 10 years ago. Then it took them six, seven years to cross two billion. They're at 2.3 billion in revenue these days, right? Nowadays, Starbucks over 100 billion market cap as well, 34 billion in revenue. Now, what is the price sales for these companies? Well, McDonald's is on the higher side of eight, and historically it's been eight. It's even been ten at some points. It's been growing forever. It's a fat. It grew fast, right? They took over the. the they're the. They're the fast food king. Chipotle trades at a six, kind of five year average here. Um, Wendy's is a three. Burger King is a three um, and Starbucks is a four, but it's traded much higher as well. And so we have to assume some things and, and figure out where we're, where we're going to get to. And if you look at Chipotle over here, yes, the, I, I'm using the last five years. And, you know, you might think it grew since it's been around. It was going faster. It wasn't right. It, these these years in between from 2014 to 2020, there really wasn't much growth. Right. It was kind of flatlined. The last five years is when it's really accelerated in terms of Chipotle. And so it's okay to use that that PS of um, that PS of six, which is the five year average rate for Chipotle. And you can do that by going here and looking at this growth number. And we kind of have that. Sorry, looking at valuation number. We have price sales of five point three eight for Chipotle for that five year average. Okay, so I guess it should be five um, five there. Okay, and if you look at the growth. Chipotle is not growing as fast, right? Five-year average of 14%. It's, it's slowing down here, 13%. It's growing faster than a sector, just like Shake Shack. But remember, Shake Shack is a company that is growing much faster than that. The five-year average is 20%, and it's still at 20%. Um, <clears throat> so keep that in mind, okay? This company is growing like a tech stock, and it's the fastest growing amongst these. And so not, not only is it the fastest growing, but it has the most room to grow, because we talked about they only have 500 locations as of now. Okay, they also have really good profit um, gross margins. So if we assume this annual growth rate, you're seeing here, I'm assuming a 15% annual growth rate. So I'm, I'm even taking a very, very low assumption, right? We're going at 20%. Um, they're projected to continue growing at 18% for the next five years. And I'm using 15 just to be on a super safe side and give myself a margin of safety. Um, by, 2020, by 2028, so in five years, we'll cross that 2 billion mark. By 2030, so by the end of the decade, it will be at 2.6 million. So where can we be by 2030 if we're at 2.6 million? This is a very safe assumption. 
15% annual growth rate, I think we're going to grow much faster than that. We're going to grow much faster than that in terms of Shake Shack. But if we assume this number by 2030, we assume a price sales of four. Um, and again, that's the low end assumption here. Uh, for, for a company growing 20% or 15% annually, a price sales of four is very low, right? That's a $10 billion um, market cap. If we group, if we um, assume a price sales of six, that's a $16 billion market cap, and a price sales of eight, which is a bit on the higher end, which Chipotle has been there before, McDonald's stays there when it's growing fast, and for a company growing at over 20%, which kind of exceeds the, even the five-year rate of Chipotle when it's been growing at its fastest ever in these past five years, but it was never growing kind of above 20, um, right? Um, that'll be a $21 billion market cap. And so, you know, that's a 5X from, 4X from today's prices, right? 2.6 million, 2.6 billion market cap. If we achieve this number by 2030 and a reasonable low end, low end um, assumption of PS4 will be a $10 billion company. That means the, the current price is going to 4X. So you're going to 4X your money, um, 15 here. So kind of like 6, 7X and, and, and over 20. So essentially a 10X, right? So remember, that's a very safe assumption there. And, you know, I think this is reasonable to assume and that's a 10x from today's prices, right? From 2 billion to 20 billion, um, it's almost a 10x. Um, so you're going to get a thousand percent returns if you hold Shake Shack through 2030 and they achieve this level of growth, um, which again is a safe assumption, 15%. We can put 20 and you can run your own models, but I want to be safe. Um, and then we trade a bit up because of that growth. We trade a bit rich at a price sales of eight, but you're at least gonna 5X your money, I believe by 2030, because these are pretty safe assumptions and we have the room to grow. So I don't see why growth should slow down. The interest rates are highest now. That's only going to get better, right? 10% reduction in startup cost going forward. And this elevated CapEx is gonna come down. There's new staffing model efficiency. The kiosk, the drive-throughs is gonna help their bottom line as well. So they're gonna start to become profitable. They're gonna start to become profitable. Then they can return money to the shareholders or use some of those retained earnings to drive growth even further if they don't wanna buy back shares or issue a dividend, right? Other thing they talked about was, yeah, and, and they're not going to dilute you. They're, they're very, they're, they're aware of this stock-based comp and they're, they're, they're forecasting that to come down. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe we're going to get to some crazy, you know, if we go, for, there's a hundred X opportunity between us and McDonald's. That's probably not going to happen. I mean, it might happen in 40 years. It's not going to happen in the next 10 years, but from, from five, 10 X to hundred X, there's a lot of room, a lot of gray area, a lot of room for growth, right? And so just keep that in mind with Shake Shack. So in summary, this is a company that I don't think it's cheap, right? It's 2%, two, 2%. It's right in line with the market. It's not expensive either, right? It's it's right in line with the S&P, um, 2% 2, 2, 2 price to sales, but it's growing and it has so much room to grow, right? A plus 20%. It's growing like a tech stock and they're achieving profitability. This is right now, but they just crossed the line um, into positive earnings, and that's gonna continue improving as time goes by because they've shown us that management can exceedingly beat expectations in terms of earnings and 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 we and continue to raise guidance and revise guidance to the upside, and the analyst up revisions match that, right? And so where can we go? There's not much TA to do for this video, but in terms of where we are now, right? Shake Shack, it's tagged red at this point in time, you know, we came up into the red shade. So this is a typical sell signal right here, red shade with divergence um, into the moving averages. And, you know, we rejected that and it looked like that red shade flip was going to go and take us down. But it looks like it's trying to hold on, right? We ended up printing a morning star and holding on Friday, holding that 50 day moving average. We didn't. And then if you look at the red candle, we didn't actually get a lot of red volume. Um, and so that might be a, a bit of a shakeout or a, a false signal there. Um, and this might be a rounded bottom, right? I, I started to look at this bottom after this false signal, and it looks pretty good in terms of a head and shoulders or a rounded bottom, right? We have red dots into pink dots, so that's fading momentum into no dots, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder with bullish divergence, right? Because red dots is heavy selling um, pressure, pink is light, and then none selling pressure here on the right shoulder. What else? We had bullish divergence on the red pendulum, and then we had a growing green pendulum, right? Even smaller red pendulum here. And so this looks like a nice 
decent bottoming pattern we broke the neckline now the only problem is yes we rejected the 200 moving average for about one or two weeks and we printed that red shade flip however again there wasn't a lot of volume on that rejection and bulls came in to defend the 50-day moving average so there's a chance this bullish reversal pattern is going to work out you could try to take that trade with a tight stop here below three percent risk and all the upside you want for a shorter term trade um and and but either way um you know it's not the best you have, you have volume on this gap this earnings gap up sold off and you know the red shade flip you know this is going to look cleaner when we can break higher highs and tag green and a jupiter pendulum and another thing i forgot to mention is we have the light green dot showing up already and the jma has turned green so bullish momentum is here and they're proving that to you by holding the moving averages and, and making this a potential false breakdown so that looks good but we still need to break out and get those dark green dots and that green jupiter pendulum right you want to see these dark green dots that's when you buy pullbacks into the moving averages that's when you buy pullbacks into green shades with divergence and so again dark green dots on breakouts pullbacks into the moving averages green shade oversold conditions that's what you want to be buying so right now we have light you want to see it break higher with dark and that's for a more confirmed trade if you rather wait for more confirmation from a trading standpoint um you could take the head and shoulders if you want to or you i think this though is just a long-term opportunity we talked about I'm not expecting a, a 10 or 100x really fast but i think if you hold this to 2030 it's going to be much higher um then than it is today right it's going to be over 100 dollars. it's it's easily going to be 100 percent on your money um and and i think it has much more potential than that again great management team and they exceed expectations it's not overvalued right now it's not necessarily too undervalued but there's a lot of growth coming and so i think it's an interesting opportunity i think it's a buy on any dips right because if this thing dips down to 15 percent down well now you're talking about you know you're at a two billion dollar market cap and if it dips down to where it was here um which is 33 percent down you're at a 1.5 percent market cap and that's a pretty that's a great price because then you're really talking about a 50x potential over the next decade or more and so um long-term investment remains lucrative right you start to see a lot of green volume bars coming in here um so keep that in mind i, I think this thing has bottomed i don't see how we'll be trading below 40 here so if you want to take it more like that like a, a wider stop and kind of dca in here um you know kind of think about it as uh, as long as we remain below 80 you can dca you can do that as well all right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know. Kill, Mary, fuck. Five Guys, McDonald's, Shake Shack. Love you guys. See you on the next one. Um, go have a Shake Shack burger. Have a beer. Have a shake. And um, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you guys. Peace.